My husband and I have been together for three years. He has three kids from his previous relationship and I have one. She's the oldest, 17. He's a dedicated man, puts God first and loves everyone. My husband always complains that my daughter doesn't spend time with her step-siblings or him but she has reasons for that and that is school, health issues, and work. She does her best to spend as much time with them as she can. But she on the other hand complains that her stepdad tells her to basically take on the role of a babysitter whenever she's with her step-siblings. My husband denied that and said that my daughter was making up excuses to not have to spend time with his kids, for this issue, I figured that a family trip is what the family need to get together and spend more time around each other's. My husband liked the idea but said that his kids are now uncomfortable around my daughter because of her attitude and suggested we let her stay home and have the house all to herself since that's what she always wanted. I told him it's best that we all go. He kept comp lang till I snapped and told him to stop. I booked, paid, for the whole family. However, my daughter told me she couldn't find her passport. We turned the house upside down looking for it but couldn't find it. My husband said maybe it was a sign from God that we should let her stay home so the trip wouldn't turn into a disaster. I ignored his comment but later while I was cleaning his office I found the passport, tucked away in the third drawer under a ton of papers. I was floored by this, I confronted him with it and he swore he had no idea why or how the passport got there. I checked the upstairs camera and saw him enter my daughter's room. That was it for me, I screamed my head off at him then cancelled the whole trip completely. He started arguing saying I overreacted and that he didn't want his kids to be miserable on the trip and that willing to apologize to my daughter if and when I reconsider my decision regarding the cancellation of the trip because my stepkids will be devastated but I said it was final and that it was done. He become cold and distant and said that he wants to take some time to do some fasting and get guidance from God about how he should deal with the disrespect and control I had displayed. Lately, what should I do? I have a phobia of horses. I put phobia in quotation marks because phobias are irrational fears, and I don't think my fear is irrational but everyone else in my life keeps calling it a phobia, I do like animals, but horses are just not it for me. I don't like being around them, and I have no interest in petting them or riding them, when I was around 8 years old, a horse attacked me unprovoked and nearly killed me, and I was hospitalized, my best friend Eliza is the opposite to me. When we were in high school, she was your stereotypical horse girl. She owns some horses of her own now and is still obsessed with horses. I don't interact with Eliza's horses and never have. I respect that we can have our own interests, and Eliza and I have different things to talk about, I have a daughter Tanya and Eliza occasionally kindly volunteers to babysit for me, Eliza has her own daughter of similar age and they play together nicely, last week. I asked Eliza to babysit for me so me and my partner could go to my cousin's child free wedding. And she agreed. I paid Eliza to babysit and gave her some extra money to get herself and the girls takeout. Well, when after I picked Tanya up and was driving home, Tanya was telling me about how she sat on a horsey. At first I thought Tanya was talking about a toy rocking horse, but then she told me about how she fed the horsey some apples. When I got home, I called Eliza and asked if she had my daughter interact with her horses, at first Eliza denied everything and said she didn't know what I was talking about, but when I said Tanya told me about it, Eliza admitted she held Tanya whilst she was sat on one of her horses. And let Tanya help feed one of her horses, Eliza went on and on about how safe it is, and that she was in complete control of the situation. That the horse was standing completely still when she held Tanya on the horse's back. I told Eliza that what she did was irresponsible and that doing it behind my back was unacceptable. I was so angry and uncomfortable. She said that I'm overreacting because of my phobia and said that Tanya was completely safe, and went on about how well trained her horses are and how she knows so much about horses. I said I didn't care and that she should think about what she did, 
My family thinks I overreacted and that I should apologize to Eliza. That I'm projecting my phobia onto my daughter, who is right. A neighbor of mine has seven children and they are all under the age of nine. I have seen her many times and she always demands people take the next elevator because she has kids who need to get home. She has physically shoved into the elevators and forced people out, including my elderly father, I was on my way home from work, I take public transit, and she was on the bus with all kids. They were screaming and running up and down the aisle, basically making such a scene that the driver asked her to have the kids sit down before they get hurt. Sure enough, one of the kids was spinning around one of the poles and bumped her head as we were going over the train tracks near my place and started screaming. She looked like she was physically okay, no blood, not even a red mark, but she screeched the rest of the ride to the building, I was first in the building and hit the elevator button. She came in with her double stroller and her gaggle of children running around her as I stepped into the elevator and held the door for her. She told me that I would have to get out and wait for the next one. I said excuse me. She heavy sighed at me and said my stroller won't fit in with you in here. Get out and take the next one. I refused, saying I would make myself as tiny as I could but I was staying in the elevator. She became irate, pointed at her kids and said do you see what I'm dealing with here? I said I understood that it's overwhelming but I had worked a long day and I needed to get home. I said in or out, because I'm going now. She pulled her stroller and kids out, calling me an asshole the entire time. A few people were waiting behind her and got in with me. Two began thanking me for standing up to her because she does this all the time, but the other one called me an asshole for not being sympathetic to her situation. I don't think people should have to make constant accommodations for people just because they have kids, especially when they're rude and demanding. X and I were never married but we share two sons, Cole 9 and Mika 8. Three years ago he met his wife Janessa and 18 months ago they started living together with her kids who are under the age of 10 I believe. The boys struggled with their dad being serious with someone and I hated that for them, so I put them both into therapy. My ex wasn't thrilled. His biggest complaint was therapy wasn't something he believed in. But our court order states either of us can put the kids in therapy as long as the parent who makes the choice pays, provides access to the therapist to the other parent and it doesn't interfere with the other parent's schedule. I take the boys on my time so it was never an issue. Once they moved in together the boys started to really dislike things, and it only got worse when my ex and Janessa married. They felt like Janessa was trying to take over as their mom which they didn't like. There was pressure put on them to call her mom and her kid's brother and sister. I don't know everything, the boys prefer to keep certain things between them and their therapists, but after a while the two therapists raised concerns about the environment at my ex's house and having no cooperation from him when both tried to speak to him, it was agreed I should try to amend the parenting time he gets. The judge decided he should go from 50-50 to every other weekend and a dinner every other Wednesday. X was not happy. He argued that he could provide them with a two-parent home. The judge said they were engaging in parental alienation by attempting to force the title of mom for his wife. He also told my ex that he should have cared more about his son's well-being and engaged with their therapists. X and Janessa are really unhappy with the new schedule and they have both attempted to complain to me that it was disruptive to their household to have the boys so little and to have more money taken out of their household. I do my best not to engage. Janessa is pregnant now and they wanted to have the boys, the weeks leading up to the birth, so they would be present when she has the baby. I said no, I told them it was not the best interest of the boys. So they decided to bring it up around Janessa's daughter, during a moment where the boys were not present, how it impacted their household and how much of a strain is on them. I told them I did not care about their household. I care about my sons and their best interest. The child heard. My ex and Janessa called me an asshole for saying that in front of her. I was going to put refusing to help my ex-fiancé's family. 
It's been 10 years and my head is still not okay. When I was 30 and my girlfriend, MG, was 24 she was hit by a car. She had moved across the country to be with me after she finished university, she took a long time to die. Long enough for her parents to come and forbid me from going to the hospital to be with her, when she died they took the body back to Maine and told me not to come to the funeral. They said that they would have me removed. I respected their wishes, I had to find out where her grave was from one of her old roommates, I only went to see it once because her mom was there with her little brother when I went. She lost it on me. It was my fault that she was in city far from her family and it would not have happened if I hadn't dragged her to California. He told me he hated me like only a seven-year-old can, so I left. And never went back. I was broken for a long time. I eventually met my wife and we have been married for almost a year now. I was working for a fang company when MG died. I was the beneficiary to her life insurance. I was having trouble concentrating bad work so I took a leave of absence. After a couple of months of trying to join her I realized she would hate what I was doing to myself. So I resigned my job and used the insurance money to fund my own little startup. I'm not Oprah rich but I do okay. MG's little brother was recently accepted to an Ivy League school. I know this because him and his parents all reached out to see if I would give them the insurance money to help with his tuition. These are people who I thought would be in my life forever and they abandoned me at the lowest point in my life. I had friends but I have no other family. They didn't just abandon me. They made it worse, now they need my help. They say that if I don't give them the money they will have to take out a mortgage on their house to pay for his education. They said I was in the wrong to even keep the money and that it should have gone to them to begin with, I loved these people once but they destroyed me. The money they want is negligible to me. I could give it to them without in any way compromising my lifestyle. I want to brag about how little it will affect me but I feel petty. It's just not much to me but it is life changing to them, my wife says it's my choice. I want to punish them for how they treated me. But I know MG would want me to help her family. Do I deserve condemnation? My mom had me really, really young, my dad was never in the picture. She's still very beautiful and people say we look like sisters, for as long as I can remember, my mom was a very hardworking and independent woman, she takes proud on not letting any men or her family have any financial chain on her, which is super awesome, I admired her until she got on her high horse, my longtime boyfriend comes from a very wealthy family, so he tends to shower me with gifts and surprises, my mom doesn't like it. For her, I'm always relying on his money which is not true, I have two jobs, one at school and one part-time. A few months ago one of my cousins introduced the terms sugar daddy slash baby to her, and from that moment she was sure that was my situation, which I s not. I've tried to explain to her that my relationship is genuine, that my boyfriend and I are loving partners and that he's not my bag of money, but she doesn't understand. My boyfriend thinks I should just ignore her because we both know what's really happening behind doors but is kinda hard. I feel like she respects me less because of this, well, she has been seeing Ben for a few months now, and he's always giving her nice stuff, flowers every week, jewelry, cards, going out to nice places, etc., my mom is really happy, and I'm happy for her. I noticed the hypocrisy but I said nothing because it wasn't my intention to bring my mom down. Yesterday, my boyfriend got us matching rings and while he was at the bathroom, my mom made a small sugar baby comment and like divine justice. She received flowers from Ben at the same time, saying that he'll take her someplace nice and she didn't have to worry about anything but look pretty. She was smiling and I said, good. Now we are both sugar babies, mom, her smile dropped and said it wasn't funny and that it was different, I just left with my BF but she texted me saying we need to talk and I need to apologize because it's not the same. I am marrying the love of my life. We have a 10-year-old daughter. She was five when I met my fiancé. The bio dad is not in the picture. 
We did not start dating until my fiancé finished college three years ago. She worked her ass off as a single mom to get her high school diploma and then her teaching degree after her parents kicked her out when she got pregnant. She did eventually reconcile and they helped her with childcare while she finished school, we met when she was a student teacher at the school where I work. For the last two years her daughter has been my daughter. I am adopting her as part of our wedding. Because I am her dad, both my fiancé and myself are Caucasian. My daughter is mixed race, when we were discussing both our parents I overheard my mother saying she can't wait to have a real grandchild. I immediately asked what she meant by that. She said that she just means it's obvious that my daughter isn't biologically mine. She says that she wants a child that is obviously her grandchild to show off. I would never in a million years have guessed those words would come out of my mother, I told her she wasn't welcome at my wedding and not to worry about being seen with my daughter because she would never be seeing any of my kids, she has been blowing up my social media. Claiming that it's my fault for not understanding how she feels. It takes everything I have not to block her because her and my dad share accounts. I want to just call her out as a racist by plus ch, my family thinks I should give her another chance. I don't want her and her attitude near my family. My fiancé says it's my call. But I know she is hurt by what my mother said.